Yeah. It's such an important modality as well. I think that's、um, what really drives me. Is because I have seen so much, so much firsthand,、um, so many times people in my classes how it's really changed their lives, and then、um, I just I just understand and know how important it is to add into our practice or into、um, our classes that we're teaching. So yeah, so in yeah. terms of your training, we've I know you 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 teach yoga teachers how to train how to teach chair yoga. Where、yeah. did you learn it? Yeah, so I learned from Lakshmi Volkar, who is the LV in LVCYA, <laughs> so oh, LV oh, Chair Yoga Australia. Yeah,、oh. and so I came across her in、um, 2014 because I was teaching some senior Zumba classes and wanted to do. I just had like a little moment at the end where I wanted to do something with them、um, in terms of. Mindfulness, breathing, stretching—something a bit quieter than Zumba, because I just felt there was a need for it. But I couldn't really find anything here,、um, so I came across that course in New York and ended up going. Well, you, you know, love New York, and、uh, let's go. So I ended up going over there and doing the training then, and then I came back and was teaching and.、Um, Teaching for quite a while, just just me. But every time I would want to go traveling or do something, I'd have to get covers that didn't know how to teach. Uh, chair yoga, at least not in the way that we teach it, which is、um, it's really important to me because the the options, the language, everything that comes into our our kind of、um, teaching, it it wasn't always present. So、um, so yeah, so sometimes I'd be lending my manual to people to help them <laughs> like I don't learn, and and I just realised we really need the trainings here as well. So that, yeah, then that all、yeah. started as well. Yeah,、oh, so it's been quite、great. the ride.、Mm. Yeah, I can imagine because I've done some training in chair yoga, like as part of、um, yoga therapy. But、mm. because I, I wouldn't be comfortable teaching it because I haven't practiced, and it's not something that ever came up with my students when I was teaching in studios and stuff. And not all studios、yes. are geared for it either, because well, you need、no. chairs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You need places to store the chairs, and you know all that、yeah. kind of stuff as well. So, do you find that it's、uh, like Iyengar type studios that that you would teach chair yoga in? Because that's the only place that I've known to have like stacks of chairs, not just yeah. Like、um, Iyengar do have chairs, but they use it more as a prop.、Uh, it's a little、yeah. bit different practice to what we do, which is where we use the chair as as part of the practice, and it kind of becomes an extension of the body. And so, all of the practice is done seated、um, on the chair. Um, I don't know how a younger feels about <laughs> that kind of chair yoga. Or if like I've never really been in a younger studio to practice most of my、uh, to teach. Sorry, most of the classes that I find myself teaching are actually in either、um, community centres or in、um, offices or somewhere where they already have chairs there and they're already、oh. set up with. Kind of the the、um, the people that want to practice chair yoga as well. So, like, say they're more senior orientated, or maybe the corporate world. Some people are doing it with kids in their classrooms, which is really fantastic because if we can get kids into yoga at a young age, and、um, someone, one of our teachers was teaching、um, high school boys, and she just said, "Wow, like the difference that that makes to add into their day." And that's really the beauty of it. You can just do it anywhere, anytime. You know,、um, I've got clients who have brain injury, stroke, and I use it a lot with them,、uh, and it helps to build their confidence up too. In terms of, like, then they might feel more willing to stand up and do things because they feel like they trust their body more from practicing in the chair first. So, yeah, it's really, it's really awesome. But、um, yoga studios, I haven't, per- I haven't personally taught in yoga studios, but I do know that some people do. Um, have classes in the studio, and they're willing to get the chairs and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it's fantastic. Oh well, that's interesting. What you said about chairs used for props, as opposed to what you do, which is not a prop. See, I I, I think of a chair as a prop. So my whole、yeah. thinking is is not the same. I suppose. Oh, it can be for sure. 
I mean, right, that's still right. a really beautiful way. And even if, like, for example, we might use another chair as the prop um, to do, like, double chair yoga or something like that, you know, and it can be, it can definitely be, and it's so useful and um, and helpful for people as a prop as well. It's just a, a little bit of a different um, a different way of thinking about it, right? So, yeah. Yeah, because mm. yeah, in the – I've got an Iyengar background like from years and years ago. I don't do it now, but we used to use like two chairs to do a headstand. Oh, yes. And, and then the we middle? used to <laughs> – yeah, and we used to bend wow. backwards over the chair to do a really deep back bend. So I can yeah. imagine that would not be considered accessible. Uh, no, and if you look at the <laughs> hashtag, um, hashtag chair yoga, it's pretty scary what some of the people – I saw someone with – they had their legs up in the air and they had the side of their head on the ground. It was like <laughs> – I was like, whoa. But I actually had someone come who was in a wheelchair and she came to my Mind, Body, Spirit um, workshop that I was doing and she said she really wanted to train to be a chair yoga teacher but she had looked at the hashtag – chair yoga and it scared her and she thought I'll never be able to do anything like that and I was and I just said like you know stick around for the workshop and I'll um, show you that it's not it's not all upside down stuff (laughs) so you can definitely join in and um and at the end she was yeah she was very keen to sign up so you know it's it's like um just a matter I'm I think that's what what drove me on social media too was like to put myself out there it was that need to change what is present on social media you know um it's present in across all types of yoga you know and um yeah if we can show people real people doing real yoga and um having real experiences i think that's really really special and it will help people a lot so yeah so that was another driver of me getting my name out there too <laughs> yeah that's great yeah. good on you because those hashtags are ridiculous a friend of mine uh, posted something yesterday about hashtag accessible yoga and it oh. was all like this acrobatic stuff. And I know. I see that all the time as well. Yes. Yeah, you must be, oh. you must like have a radar for it more. But it's like, <laughs> why would you use that hashtag? I don't understand. Yeah, why I don't know. Yeah, I don't Thanks. think. I don't think people who are following those hashtag that hashtag would really be interested in seeing. Oh. I mean, I can't. Ju- I can't say for everybody. Um, I think they look really amazing sometimes, but um. Yeah, yeah, it's not really what accessible yoga stands for, I guess, in the, in the whole scheme yeah. of things. So, yeah, it's really interesting. So I'm interested in this idea of accessible yoga and whether, I was thinking to myself, whether yoga in its origin was kind of more accessible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course, there are many branches of yoga, so we can't yeah. put a Where did it on even it. start? <laughs> But whether or whether accessible yoga is kind of like a Western thing that we've ado- adopted to adapt to to our clients. What's your point? Yeah, I think that it has been adapted because basically, um, if we think about where yoga came from, it's a very different world now, and we are living in this like. Um, westernized world right where we're sitting all the time and we've got all these things happening in our bodies that if we try to do the yoga practice as it was um or as it's scripted to be it's just going to probably cause injury or just be inaccessible no one will be able to do it so um yeah so definitely like but i think it's really nice actually that things change and evolve and um become something that that can work for that individual because we are all individuals coming to the practice. So any type of scripted thing, like um, it, it doesn't really work anyway, right? Because we're all so individual in our needs and where we're at and what we're trying to do and what we, we you know, what we need. And so, um, yeah, so having these adaptations and flexibility in our way of thinking around yoga, I think is really beneficial. So, yeah, I think – I don't know if there is chair yoga in the East. I know I have been in contact with some people in India who do it, who do it in their classes. I'm not sure what sort of chair yoga they're doing. But, um, but yeah, we definitely, um, I think, well, at least our chair yoga came from the 1980s in America. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so that's definitely westernized. But that came from a need to adapt the mat, program, um, mat practice to help 
one of Lakshmi's students who had rheumatoid arthritis. So there was a need for it. And then it became a practice in itself because once that, that was recognized, it was like, wow, how many other people can we help with this, you know, this amazing option and just being able to still do the poses. I mean, how like people who want to practice down with dog, but they have a wrist injury or a knee injury or a back injury or so many things that would stop them from doing it. You can just flip it over and do it on the chair and it ends up getting, you end up getting the benefits as well. So, um, you know, I mean, that's really the most important thing, isn't it? Why are we, why are we doing it and what's the purpose and can we get those benefits? How can we get those benefits? Um, yeah. And then to, yeah, being able to adapt the, the scripted shapes or whatever to be able to get the benefits is probably the most, I think that's really important. Yeah. Hmm. So in your trainings, I'm interested, is it, is it mostly based on the physical aspects of yoga or do you also have a lot of, mindfulness breath etc yeah yeah we have a lot of different things in the manual that have been collected and put in there over the years um really um always sorry don't know if you heard that little ding <laughs> um okay good <laughs> um yeah so we have definitely um the a little bit of the philosophy a little bit of the things like the yamas and yamas all of that kind of stuff in there as well and then we have the physical practice on the chair some things about you know anatomy and um, being safe and all of that in our bodies um also we have practices like double chair i mentioned before pair chair where you can do it together in um, partners which is super fun we also have wheelchair yoga we have working with people with different conditions and um, different challenges and um, I talk about trauma as well as as um, we do the training we also talk about the business and we also have things such as um, like in chapter seven we just have all these amazing things like reflexology and um, hands and knee acupressure and self-massage all these things that can really help and that way if someone in your class comes to you that needs that you have the all these little extra things that you can help them with you know or if someone isn't resonating with yoga uh there's some other options for them to be able to find some of the benefits in there so yeah so it's really it's a really cool manual actually it's been kind of evolved and it continues to evolve all the time we're always, we're always noticing things oh we should probably change that language on that page and we should we should do this here and wait how about we add this in and you know so it's it's a constant work in progress just like we are and i love that about it it's not set and it's it's going to continue to evolve and grow and um that's what that's what we are doing as humans as well. So yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Training mm -hmm. training manuals are never never finished. <laughs> never. <laughs> There's no such never. thing. No, I, definitely so, not. <laughs> I was interested what you said about wheelchair people in wheelchair that this would be mm. an excellent excellent practice. Is it is it mm. well known in those circles? Yeah, there are some people teaching wheelchair yoga, just specifically wheelchair yoga. Um, I think that it would be great to have even more classes out there, but I've had um, people who are using wheelchairs come into the classes that I'm already teaching and be part of it as well because the way that we teach is that there's options for everyone so they can actually be there with the, with, um, the other people that are there and join the community which is just amazing so no one needs to go to a special wheelchair class or a special you know um spinal class or a special ms class or a special whatever class they can all come and be there together with everyone so it kind of breaks so many barriers down in that way which is just amazing and um i've seen that really change a couple of people's lives that have come into the classes on both sides of things the person in the wheelchair and also the person the people in the class because they have um become to understand a lot more how to how to communicate how to be around how to be more patient how to be like how to do all of these different different ways of being you know and it's it's actually just amazing to see that connection growing and to see them starting to understand each other more and to be included and yeah it's just fantastic um but yeah most definitely i think wheelchair yoga would be it, it is it's just such a fantastic um 
modality and important as well because it just can help people so much. Yeah, oh, I can see why you're so passionate about it because when you can see that kind of community and the difference, of, the difference yeah. that you make in people's lives, that's brilliant. I mean, that's what we're here mm. for as, as yoga exactly. teachers. Exactly. That's right. So, yeah. so how much um, teaching are you doing versus training versus all the other things that you do? Yeah, well, it's changed a bit, of course, over the last couple of years. I was... Um, I was still teaching quite a few classes, but um, I was also traveling around doing our teacher trainings and all of that stuff. So, and really focusing on the, the back end of things, wearing all the hats, you know, <laughs> in the business yeah. as well. Um, and then of course we couldn't really travel anymore. So that's um, slowed down a bit on that front, but I'm still doing trainings online and I took the live training and put it into a virtual classroom, which is fantastic. And it's, almost the same except without the hugs but we can do virtual hugs <laughs> and um you know because we can use the breakout rooms and things like that to really facilitate connections and all the things that you get you know you know per, uh, face to face training um and we've always had our one on one private training as well going so still doing that and yeah i've just started teaching um some more online classes again um, after the Christmas break. Some of the places I was working with have come back um, online and uh, some of them offer free classes, which is fantastic. And then I'm starting to work with a rheumatology place as well, teaching, and then I have my personal yoga therapy clients. So I'm in a bit of a I need to find the balance moment, <laughs> but it will come because <laughs> everything sort of started up again quickly in February, I felt. Anyway, I don't know if you felt similarly, but it felt like everything just went full speed ahead. So, um, yeah, so March will be this, the, the settling down area, <laughs> area I think. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. A nice it's a nice problem to have. Oh, for sure. I'm so grateful. And, and even through all the lockdown, everything, I managed to have classes online. I was just very, very lucky. And um, it held me together much of the time and held the students together as well. And it was really great to see them embracing online um, technology and, and doing all that sort of thing. And also the places that I was working with as well, um, being open to to doing that as well. So yeah, really kept the community together and um, kept us all sane <laughs> as well as we went through those two years. Yeah. yeah. So what, what have been the challenges, if any, of transferring to online? Like, have you been doing online training for the last couple of years or is yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. I was, that, were you doing it before then? I was doing it before just one-on-one, -on -one, um, okay. but I wasn't doing uh, the group training online. So that was a different experience to do that. Um, and just to, you know, I, I think the first one I did or the second one, something was going on with my internet <laughs> every 20 minutes or so it would cut out and oh my, the people there were just the most beautiful people that just forgave everything. But I was yeah. just like, Oh my gosh, this is terrible. Um, yeah. you know, cause I think when we all started transitioning, it really, nothing was ready for it. Right. And it kind of, everything was crashing all the time. So that yeah. was, that was challenging. I remember. Mm. And the, the energy is different online as well. Um, as in, um, for me as the, the facilitator to be able to learn how to, um, tap more into like um, using different skills instead of like maybe because you can't visually see the whole person sometimes. So have to tap into more of that feeling. And I used to teach quite intuitively anyway when I was teaching classes, but I could always get feedback from the students and respond to what they were what they were telling me with their bodies or their faces or their mind and um, oh, with their mind, with their body or their faces or their breath and maybe with their minds. Well, maybe that's what I'm tapping into more now. With the, <laughs> on the internet. Yeah. So yeah, you have to tap into different, um, different ways of reading and getting the feedback as a teacher and then responding to that as well. Um, really keeping it simple as well on, on um, online too is another thing, just breaking it down and, um, yeah, what else? Challenges. There's been so many <laughs> dropouts and the um, and managing people who like to talk a lot in the conversation, right? Because only one person can talk a lot at a time. 
at a time yeah. on Zoom, right? So it's not like when you can have an open conversation with people, um, you know, back and forth. So how do you give everyone the chance to have a voice and how do you manage those type of things? Like that's actually quite an interesting navigation to to make. So, yeah. yeah. So you've been using stuff. the breakout rooms, I take it? Yeah. When we do the training, we do um, some... Uh, times where people can go and be with the other people to practice different things and to um, practice with each other and to have a go of teaching and all that kind of stuff. So it gives people a good chance to connect with each other on a little bit more of a personal level, get to know each other. But it's amazing. The feedback of the trainings is that people really find it's, they create good friendships and it's just um and connections with the people there like i never really thought it would be like that on zoom to be honest i was a bit hesitant because you know i just didn't didn't really think it would be like that but yeah it's quite it's quite interesting how um, how people People feel about it so yeah yeah Yeah. it's great (laughs) it's great so i wanted to ask you if people want to do this training do they need to have a are there is there a prerequisite in terms of Um, the training not yoga training we actually open up the training to everyone so they don't have to be yoga teachers already because we have a lot of people who are working say in disability or old um or um aged care or even people like i said the teacher at school or we have people who work as a physio or a psychologist even who who see this as something they can help their students with so uh so we don't actually require that you have yoga teacher training but we do ask that you have some yoga experience so that you can just understand some of the the terminology and things like that but um just you know say 15 hours practicing so you can get a little gist of what yoga is all about but we do include in the manual the things that like the foundational things as well so we don't just throw people onto the chair and say here you go like this is what you're going to do like we kind of do have background as well into yoga itself and um so we, we try to keep with the like you know the um keep on respecting the the yoga um tradition practice as well as incorporating the the modern stuff too so yeah but it's we have like a 200 plus page manual so it's huge um so there's so much info in there that we feel like people are really well equipped when they leave the course so yeah how many hours is it it's 32. I think it could be more actually, but it's, it's only called 32 hours, but um, I could see room to make it a lot more than that if we were going to, you know, count the hours up. But, um, but yeah, it's 32 hours. So yeah. Okay. That's a lot. People do get um, continuing education as well if they are yoga teachers. So yeah. Right. Yeah, Yeah. It's shorter than what I would have thought. So I'm not yeah. sure what L L V C Y is like. Yeah, what is that? L V C L V chair yoga. So Lakshmi Volker, the person that created our style yeah. of chair yoga. Yeah, okay. Lakshmi Volker it, chair yoga. <laughs> and AU is the Australian. Excuse part. my ignorance. It's probably no. someone super famous that I've never heard no, of. No, <laughs> no. Heaps of people go. What is L V? <laughs> so that's definitely that's uh, an American person. Yeah, yeah. So she is in California, in America at the moment, um, originally from Long Island, I believe. And, uh, yeah, so she started doing this back in the 80s, um, like I mentioned before, for the, her student with rheumatoid arthritis. And then um, in the 90s met her partner, Bruce, who became like the business side of her and, um, and basically encouraged her to do the trainings and, and um, make a DVD and do all that kind of stuff. So it's been around for a long time, uh, but just mostly focusing in the States. And then um, they were actually about to retire and then something else happened and it ended up instead of retiring, it's expanded out worldwide and they're still over there teaching and um, running trainings now and, um, and doing all that stuff. So yeah, going really well <laughs> over there. Right. So you never know what life's going to throw at you, but they're very adaptable and flexible. <laughs> Just, yeah. you know, go with the flow. <laughs> so when you train under that, that model you you keep the name do you it's like like a bit of a a branch uh what do you call it a um yeah 
what do you call like it? Like a brand. It's like a um a type of it's like a what is the word? Like a yeah, it's like a style. Like of, a franchise. I, I was like gonna a, use I guess, the word franchise. Oh franchise. No, I'm not a franchise, I just work um with them. <laughs> so but I basically run my own business here. Um and as like in um yeah i kind of just do everything in my own way because i guess the american and australian markets are different as well it'll be yeah. it and uh, but we're always there to support each other and to help each other out and um, we keep in regular contact and all that kind of stuff as well um but yeah definitely um I have a little bit of a different way of doing things than they do and probably Liz in the UK also has a different way of doing things as well. So, um, yeah, but it seems to, it seems to work for us in our respective ways. So, so it's really great that they're, they're flexible with that too and yeah. um, supportive. Yeah. yeah. It's good to have the creativity for yoga to, you know, branch oh, out sure. your own, you have your own style. Yeah. Like even with the logo, you know, um, I was just like, I didn't feel that connected with me and yet it really connects with Lakshmi. And so I just felt like I needed to rebrand it in a way to, to be me because I was, it's here in Australia, it's me who is the, who is running it and who's, um, who's creating this, this thing. So it had to be something that felt comfortable for me as well. So I just started doing little changes like that and then yeah. um, kind of evolved into my own thing, which has been really awesome. And even the way that I run the training is slightly different to the way they run the training. And I include my own, uh, input and, um, you know, because like at the end of the day, even Lakshmi doesn't want you to be Lakshmi. She wants you to be you. Um, I want you to be you. Like you, you don't need to be um, anybody else. That's the whole point of what we're trying to teach people is to take back their ability to choose for themselves in yoga and to practice in a way that feels right for them. So then, you know, we're applying that to our own, own ways of doing business and our own ways of running trainings and things like that. So the content is all there, but there's also extras that you get if you train with me and there's probably extras you get if you train with Lakshmi, depending, like she'll be telling her experiences, I'll be telling mine, for example, that kind yeah. of thing. So, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, well, that's brilliant because you don't always get that with, um, you know, mm -hmm. the gurus. <laughs> I honestly don't think I could um, do it if it wasn't like that. <laughs> I need to be me. <laughs> as, yeah. as, as, otherwise, I'm not practicing what I'm preaching, right? Because like I said, that's what I'm trying to encourage everyone in my classes is, is to be themselves and to just love themselves yeah. for who they are and to express themselves in their own way. And if I'm not doing that, then I'm a fraud. Like, and I don't, I couldn't do it. Yeah. yeah. No, that's brilliant, Claire. Um, mm. Especially in Australia, we have that kind of attitude, I think. Yeah. We like, our, we like our freedom. I think they had to get used to that at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but, you know, it's their baby, so yeah. it's, you know, yeah, understandable. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah no, you've, got, great. you've got your own style and you'll attract people who, who will want that. So that's, that's brilliant. Yeah. So on, on that um, topic, how would you describe, I mean, you've already described your approach in the sense that, you're very um, open and uh, you like to empower people to be themselves. Anything else that you would describe your, I, I call it the superpower? What's your superpower <laughs> when it comes to your teaching and training? Gosh, I don't know. <laughs> That's a tricky yeah. question. Um, I just really, I, all I hope is that people can just feel comfortable in my classes, in my space, that they can start to feel as though they can take their power back because I feel like we give our power away um, to a guru or to a teacher or to to whoever all the time, to the government, to, the, <laughs> to just our programs, to whatever. And I just hope that with what I'm teaching them, with how how I'm teaching them and, and how that's the space that I'm holding for them, that they can feel comfortable enough to – um, to start to take that power back for themselves and really, because I can't empower anyone else, they have to empower them, themselves. It has to come from within and the healing as well will only come when someone feels they have their power back or they feel safe enough or they feel like they can be in a place where they can be vulnerable and just be themselves. That's when the healing will happen. And I guess my 
goal is to help people heal, right? That's our goal really as a yoga teacher, um, to that self, self connection to that self healing. Yeah. So, um, I just yeah really try to create that in my classes where people just feel them and there's no judgment. There's no, yeah. there's none of that BS, no programs, nothing. <laughs> just, just you. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for everything. <laughs> Is there anything that I haven't asked that I needed to ask? Oh, I don't think so. We covered quite a bit of ground. Um, yeah. We could let them know about the discount if anyone wants oh, to yeah. do our upcoming yeah, yeah, yeah. training. Uh, um, we're, get, we're having an online virtual classroom in in March, actually, which is just around the corner. Um, so the 18th to the 20th of March, we'll be doing a virtual classroom online. But we also always have our one-on-one as well if people don't want to come to the group training. Um, and if they want, if any of your viewers want to come along, uh, if they use the code TT100 at the checkout, it will give them $100 off the training. So uh, at the moment, the early bird price is still there. So that would be a nice $200 off if they want to come along. So yeah. Yeah, so please feel free to, to join or reach out if, if anyone has any questions as well. I'm always happy to, to help and assist and answer questions. Yeah, brilliant. Oh, yeah. that's so great. Um, so cool. Good luck with that. I'm sure you don't need the luck. You probably just need to breathe. Oh. And... <sighs> yeah, and allow. <laughs> Trust and allow. <laughs> yeah, and make sure yeah. that you look after yourself, Claire, and don't burn out. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely, right? When you're in that bit of a, a time, yeah, it's really important. I'm much better yeah. recognising it, though, than I used to be, yeah. thank you to it's, yoga. <laughs> especially when you're really passionate about something and it's your baby and your business, it's very yeah. easy to just oh, do that all the time. Yeah, right? definitely, definitely. And I have I have been there as well, <laughs> been there. So uh, learning to recognise when that is creeping in is, is super important. Um, that's what I was saying. I need to, I've recognised it and just to get, get that balance back is super, yeah. super it's important. Very, it's very common, unfortunately. I don't know about chair yoga teachers, but um, other yoga teachers that I work mm. with, it's very common and it creeps up really quickly. Yeah. And then well, it's I very it's, difficult to yeah. climb back out of it takes it a is. long time so best to avoid it <laughs> yes if you can and yeah that's right recognizing early but i think we are all as um yoga teachers we're all really our own business owners aren't we and even if we're not officially doing a business um we are still our brand our marketing we are that as ourselves right so we're constantly having to do that or maybe we're driving around a lot and then um teaching and, and it can just that can add on as well just so much extra stress and time and I actually realized that going back into um driving again after COVID like because I was teaching everything online and lately I've been driving so much and that that has been part of this whole um, starting to feel, even though I don't feel stressed, I actually just put my songs on and sing and like, or listen to something um, interesting, you know, after the classes I can't cause sing, <laughs> I'm gonna just listen to something. But you know, it's, it's a, a, a time to yourself at the same time, but there's, you are constantly on alert and you're constantly having to navigate the roads and everything. So there's this level of, of stress there. So, um, so yeah, so it definitely that impacts, I think, as well. And then when you're trying to get your, you're holding your energy and, and holding space for others and you're taking on other people's energy and all that as a teacher as well, I mean, that's super important to learn how to protect yourself and to yeah. cleanse and to do all that stuff. And yeah. it's, a, it's a learning process at the beginning. You don't really, re really realise that you need to do all that stuff. But but yeah, definitely do. Yeah. Um, so do you do everything in your business yourself? I do most of it. I do have a VA that um, is very amazing and helpful um, in terms of scheduling posts because I am just... <laughs> 
time it's like keeping a logbook in the car I just I'm not very good at record keeping let's put it that way and so scheduling is kind of like that thinking ahead and doing all that so it's so wonderful to have her helping me on that side of yeah. things but other than that I do everything uh, and I still of course do all the posts and everything but um you know edit them and make sure they're all um they're all um authentic and me because I could not do it otherwise and uh yeah everything else that's right I've learned so much <laughs> in the last few years about yeah. things I would just uh, some things I don't like and will never probably like and other things that I never thought I would be doing you know so um yeah it's pretty pretty interesting good on you Claire awesome <laughs> thank you <laughs> Thank you for the good work that you do and bringing your light into the world and helping so many people. That's brilliant. Aww. Thank you. And thank you for inviting me to come and chat with you. And I always um, enjoy seeing what you're doing as well because you're also shining your light out into the world. And, um, yeah, we're grateful for you too.